Panasonic has launched its new flagship JZ2000 OLED TV with HDMI 2.1 support at CES 2021. Let's talk about it. This coverage is sponsored by Richard Sounds Manchester. Call 0333 900 0086 for the best prices and expert advice for TVs, AV and Hi-Fi. Hello everyone, Vincent Theo from HGTV Test here. Although there is no CES in person this year, like many other manufacturers, Panasonic has held an online event to launch its new flagship JZ2000 OLED TV with Master HDR Custom Professional Panel. So just like last year's HZ2000 and also the 2019's GZ2000, the JZ2000 will feature a custom professional OLED panel which is supplied by LG Display but has been customized and modified by Panasonic themselves to allow for even higher peak brightness than conventional OLED and also higher APL or average picture level as well. The way this works is that there is an additional metal heatsink behind the OLED panel that serves to dissipate the heat that is generated from higher peak brightness content on screen and therefore it will cool it down faster allowing for higher peak brightness and more impactful HDR. And through our testing of the Panasonic GZ2000 and also the HZ2000, we also found that due to this improved cooling, the panel is also capable of clearing up any image retention in a quicker fashion than a conventional OLED, thus hopefully reducing the risk of permanent OLED screen burn or burn-in. So I'll be interested to see if the JZ2000 will continue on the same trend as well. Now, what is new for 2021 then? There is a new processor which the company calls the HCX Pro AI processor and as you can probably guess from the inclusion of the AI term inside the chip name, there is artificial intelligence thrown into the mix. So new for 2021, there will be an auto AI mode on the JZ2000 which will analyze the content on screen and then compare the content with Panasonic's database that they have actually collected through machine learning. Through this comparison, then the TV's AI processor can decide what type of content is it and then work their processing magic to optimize not only the picture but also the sound. An example that Panasonic gave in its press release is that, you know, let's say if the TV manages to detect that what is being displayed on screen is sports content, then they will try and improve the sound to make it more stadium-like, you know, widen the sound stage. And then also on the picture front, you know, maybe apply some sharpening on the players to make them more three-dimensional and also make the grass look more vivid and green, maybe through boosting of color saturation. And this to me doesn't sound color accurate at all. But reassuringly, Panasonic also cited another example of the auto AI mode working for film content. So when film or movie content is detected on screen, then the TV will automatically dial in the most accurate colors to present the creator's intent in a more accurate fashion. So that is at least quite reassuring to me. But until I actually see it in action and put my meter on it, then I will never know, you know how accurate this is going to be. But Auto AI is certainly a new feature that is brought about by the HCX Pro AI processor. Now, another advantage that is brought about by this new chipset is HDMI 2.1 support. I know many of you have been screaming for HDMI 2.1 support on last year's HZ2000 or just generally HZ series, and this year Panasonic has seen fit to add HDMI 2.1 support including ALLM, which has been supported last year anyway, and then very refresh rate and also high frame rate. Now, currently, we do not have any information about whether the HDMI 2.1 chip on the Panasonic JZ2000 is going to be 40 gigabits per second or 48 gigabits per second, and we do not know how many HDMI 2.1 ports are there going to be on the television. But Panasonic, like many other manufacturers at this CES 2021, is keeping the cards close to their chest. So they will probably reveal more technical information in a range reveal event, probably later in March. So we hope to find out more then. And besides adding these HDMI 2.1 gaming features, Panasonic has also worked hard 
to lower the input lag on the JZ2000. So according to the company, the input lag on the GZ2000 will be improved or lowered to the same level as class leading competitors. And another quite intriguing feature that I saw within the press release concerning HDMI 2.1 support is something called HDMI signal power link. And this apparently will provide better compatibility with older PCs and set top boxes without CEC support. So that's from the HDMI 2.1 point of view, and together with the low input lag, Panasonic is coining the term Game Mode Extreme to describe this superior gaming experience, especially with high frame rate, especially with VRR that provides for a buttery smooth gameplay together with next-gen consoles such as the Sony PS5 and also the Xbox Series X. Next, we're going to talk about HDR because Panasonic has been a big brand in supporting multiple HDR formats and just like last year's HZ2000, the JZ2000 will be supporting static metadata HDR10, broadcast friendly hybrid log gamma or HLG, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and also Dolby Vision IQ. Now new for 2021, the company will be supporting HDR10 Plus Adaptive, which I have speculated in my previous video covering the announcement by Samsung. So that means that Panasonic is going to be the first and maybe the only TV manufacturer on the market to support all these different ambient light correction technology based on dynamic metadata. And they even have their own filmmaker mode with intelligent sensing, which will again try to present a more watchable HDR picture for a brighter environment. So I think, you know, if you are worried about your TV not being compatible with certain HDR formats or not being able to take advantage of certain dynamic metadata formats, then you do not need to worry when buying a 2021 Panasonic TV, including the GZ2000. Obviously, I'm saying 2021 TV because I expect that these features will trickle down to the Japanese brand's other 2021 televisions when they do a range reveal sometime in March. So that's from the HDR side of things. Next, what we are going to cover is the sound. And again, there is some improvement on the sound part. Remember that last year's HZ2000 and also the preceding GZ2000 in 2019, there is an upfiring speaker on these TVs that will bounce sound off the ceiling to provide a more immersive Dolby Atmos effect. Now, on the GZ2000, Panasonic has gone one step further and added side-firing speakers you know, to the back of the television near the middle portion, which will emit sound and bounce them off the walls to provide an even more immersive Dolby Atmos experience for you to enjoy without having to purchase additional speakers or external speakers, soundbars, and things like that. So I know some of you are keen to get a Panasonic OLED panel with just the custom professional panel without any superfluous soundbar or speaker system, but not everyone has that luxury or space to accommodate a dedicated external, say 7.1 or 7.1.4 system to get a better Atmos experience. And I think, you know, Panasonic is certainly giving those people a choice of having an easy to assemble set that doesn't need too much tinkering or setup to get a more enveloping surround sound experience. And Panasonic is calling this new sound system, which is tuned by Technics, by the way, 360 degrees Soundscape Pro. Now let's talk about the design. The Panasonic JZ2000 will have a round circular base and it can be swivel. And I think that this design decision is sure to turn heads, you know, given how premium the product is. But we'll see how well this is going to be received in the general consumer market. I think, you know, in terms of price point, Panasonic has admitted that it will launch at a similar price to last year's HZ2000 and maybe the GZ2000 the year before. So we can expect it to be at least, you know, £4,000 or close to £4,000. And I think for many of you, I think you probably prefer 
a custom professional OLED panel from Panasonic and maybe even in a bigger screen size because the Panasonic GZ2000 is only available in 55 inches and also 65 inches sizes and if I'm honest I think you know one thing that many enthusiasts would be happy to pay for would be an even larger screen size, maybe going up to 7 and 7 inches. But unfortunately, the Panasonic GZ2000 is still only available in 55 inch and 65 inch versions. And I think, you know, we have to wait until the company's range reveal event in March to find out whether the company will be offering both either smaller, for example, a 48-inch OLED or a bigger 77-inch OLED in their lower down, step down ranges. But I think, you know, from the point of view of the Panasonic GZ2000, what Panasonic is trying to do is to move beyond just being the best at movies, at films, because we know that Panasonic has class-leading color accuracy, and they have worked with Hollywood colorists such as Stefan Sonnefeld to try and tune the colors to how they would look on a mastering monitor. And from my experience of testing, reviewing, and seeing Panasonic televisions, they have always come across to me as presenting the most natural colors and the most accurate colors that is true to the creator's intent. But this year, they are seeking to move beyond that and they are targeting the gaming market with HDMI 2.1 with Game Mode Extreme. And from the point of sports content, they are trying to use the Auto AI mode to present an easy to use picture preset for customers who are not willing to tinker with settings, who just want to switch on the TV and enjoy the content in whatever best possible manner, not only in picture, but also in sound. And that's where the auto AI mode comes in. Oh, before I forget, there is also some improvement to the smart TV platform on the Panasonic GZ2000. So the My Home Screen platform is now 6.0, and there are a couple of key new features added. So the first one would be My Scenery, which sounds to me like a screensaver type of functionality, and you can display some serene photos or even videos to cater for your mindfulness session and the other function is a dual bluetooth connection because previously panasonic tvs have only supported one bluetooth device connected to the television but with the dual bluetooth connection you can connect two sets of headphones or maybe a keyboard and a headphone however you want to mix and match with the tv to allow for more flexibility in how you want to enjoy the television especially when you are listening at night. I would be interested to find out more technical details about Panasonic's televisions, including the GZ2000 at their range reveal in March, but hopefully this teaser event has enough meat for you to be excited about the company's upcoming 2021 TV range. If you'd like to watch some of our other videos on CS 2021 televisions, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.